Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have breaking news right now as we speak here. President Putin is actually in a live uh, press meeting uh, that he does publicly, uh, his annual press meeting. RT News is carrying this live. And as we have titled here on the screen and behind you, Putin clarifies Russia as the strongest nation against any aggressor. His statement is very profound. I actually was not able to capture the entire statement that he made there. I just tuned into it there, and I did not get the capture up in time, but at least I was able to capture those words in his closing remarks to the journalists that asked him about the advancements that are being made in Russian technology, uh, and of course dealing with the United States. And President Putin clearly uh, speaks about how that President Barack Obama has declared the United States the strongest nation in the world. And he says, we don't challenge that. Nobody has ever challenged that. But when he said my words about saying that Russia is the strongest nation against any aggressor, he said, I chose my words carefully. I meant what I said. Any nation that would be an aggressor to Russia, we are more stronger than they are. Clearly, he was identifying Russia as stronger than the United States, but as he does clarify in his statement, Russia is not, does not have more submarines. Russia does not have more airplanes. He said, but we do have advancements greater than that of America. It was clearly that President Putin was identifying Russia as a stronger nation based on technology in the nuclear field. This is why we have seen uh, the United States uh, scrambling, and he even alludes to this, why the U.S. has scrambled to try to redo their nuclear capabilities. Russia has far advanced the U.S., so now they are stronger than any nation or any aggressor that he speaks about. This does have strong political, excuse me, uh, biblical ramifications, and in fact, it actually gives us a clearer picture in the biblical side of it. We'll go to that in just a moment, but before I do, I want to play for you a clip of what President Putin is saying. I do uh, let you, just so for your information, the audio is not the best in the world on this. It was a quick capture. I didn't have time to get the right sound quality on it, but you can still, should be able to hear the uh, translator translating his, English, his words to English. Listen to this right here. Let's go to what um, President Putin here had to say here. On sound, that's what I told my counterpart, as I said, we need to have to, you know, somehow improve our own systems. They said, we do whatever you do, and again, it's not directed against you. Well, that's what we've been doing. Many seem to ignore that, but what is actually happening is what we agreed on by default, without any papers signed. There's nothing new happening in this area. Why does the Obama administration officials started saying that they are the strongest, that they are the most powerful? I don't know. Well, certainly you have a lot of missiles and submarines and more submarines than Russia. We don't argue that. We don't challenge that. We're just saying that we are stronger than any aggressor. And this is true. That was a very powerful and provocative statement. Uh, I think, of course, if you get a chance, go to RT. They'll probably have it in the archive there uh, because Putin does uh, clearly uh, amplify the fact that Russia is the strongest nation against any aggressor, which in reality shows their technology. And this is what he speaks about during that part of the speech is their technology in nuclear capabilities, things of this nature here. The ability to be able to strike, to be able, the defensive shields of America not be able to counterreact any of the strikes that they were to do. This is why Russia is not afraid to do the things that they're doing. But the question really comes down though, and that is, how does this affect us? Where are we at biblically when we think about Russia being the strongest nation? Okay, where are we at in that scope? And how does this play out? Well, it's the famous scripture of Matthew 24 that Yeshua says, and it's something that, you know, quite frankly, you, sometimes we forget to break down the really seriousness of the words and how they're worded there. 
When we look at Matthew 24, verse 6, he says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That was World War II, World War I. That was the rumors of wars, was the Cold War era. Now, <clears throat> this is why, if you notice, Yeshua, Jesus, that is, for those that are not used to the name Yeshua, it's wars, plural. It's rumors of wars, again, plural. Why, why do we have the pluralization? Well, wars, because we've had World War I, World War II, we've had Vietnam War, Korean War. Uh, there's always been war, rumors of wars. And those rumors being in the Cold War era, it wasn't just the war of taking down the United States. There was also the fear of the war of Russia taking down America, <clears throat> etc. There's been all types of rumors of what type of wars might come in the near future. But that's really not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with now, verse 20, uh, 24, verse 7, this is what we're dealing with now. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, or different places is another way to say that. But this time, we don't find that it's nations, plural, rising against nations, plural. Nor do we see kingdoms against kingdoms, plural. But it's in the singular. We are seeing the elite of the world. In the United States, in Russia, different nations around the world, all these different elites. They're the heads of their governments. Notice Putin re refers to the United States and to America as a nation. The U.S. nation, the Russian nation, they're both referred to in a singular. And when it comes to the nation rising against nation, we have gone beyond the rumors. In the Cold War, it was one thing. That was your war rumor phase. We are now in verse 7. Nation rising against nation. Only one nation. The two greatest empires on the earth are rising against one another. The kingdom against kingdom is because Satan's kingdom has been divided. Yeshua made the very incredible uh, um, analogy in Matthew chapter 12 <clears throat> when they said that he, was, that he cast out the devils by the spirit of Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And he said, if I could cast out Satan by the power of Satan, he said, then Satan's kingdom is divided and it would come to ruin. Do we really think that Satan's kingdom was supposed to last an eternity and that it was to never come to ruin? The thing is, as Yeshua was showing when he was here, that wasn't the time of the ruination of, of Satan's kingdom. In fact, Satan takes... Uh, Jesus up, shows him all the kingdoms of the earth that ever will be and that ever were, and he says to him, I'll give them to me if you fall down and worship me. He would give him the power to be able to be here on this earth from that time all the way 2,000 years and to rule all these kingdoms of the earth. Those kingdoms belong to Satan, and now that kingdom is majorly divided. We see this in the, in the, in the realm of, 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 of politics, uh, of the elite of the world. We see the power struggle between the, the, the elites of Russia, the elites of the United States. We see a mad rush to gather gold. You wonder what that's about, don't you? Hmm. You'd be surprised what gold can be used for, for demonic forces, especially if they have alien bodies, gold is a major, major thing for them. For longevity of life, things like that. Scientifically, that's been proven. A lot of this research they don't want you to know about. But gold has a tremendous ability. It's got anti-gravitational properties. Makes you wonder then about flying saucers, doesn't it? Makes you wonder how they built the pyramids of Giza. I can't say for sure, but it's very interesting if you ever do any research on it. But 
They're stockpiling the gold. What are they trying to do? Please their gods when they come? And in Satan's kingdom, there's more than one god. He has all kinds of gods. That's why you see all the way down from early times, uh, you know, like Abraham's uh, nephew was serving other gods, plural. Gods of stone, gods of wood. And those gods were only representation of demonic beings. And so now here we are in the day that we're living in now, and nation is up, is, rises up against nation. That's the United States and Russia rising up against each other. And one is not better than the other. Because I tell you one thing, I don't care if it's Putin or, or Obama, which one it is, they both serve the same demonic background. Now, I know that Russia at one time of the SARS was a Christian nation, but let me tell you something. There's, there's a difference between genuine Christi Christianity, the true believers of Yeshua, like it was 2,000 years ago with the apostles, and that of what we have watered down that has come down through the last 2,000 years. That's why I've always said, everything I've reported in the news, you know, I I've, I've clearly have shown the difference in the honorable, more honorable side than that of the wicked side. So when I saw Obama, all of their lies against Russia, you know, I stood with Russia in the fact that Russia did not invade Ukraine. All right, it didn't, I've never said, and I've always made this clear, it doesn't make Putin some saint with wings on or nothing like that or an angel. It doesn't make that Russia is a better nation, you know, but in both those nations, we are made up of human beings, fellow citizens of this planet, and we are brothers and sisters, and we should be able to get along. But there is another entity in behind the scenes that is provoking the wars that causes brother to fight against brother, cousin against cousin, fellow citizen against fellow citizen. And that's what's going on in the backgrounds. Because clearly, kingdom against kingdom is Satan's kingdom, and there is a major division, and there is a struggle for power going on in the background. Remember, everything that happens in Satan's world is reflected on this world here. So there is a struggle in the demonic regions there for power, and therefore on the earth, those elites that are loyal to whatever demonic force they're elite to, they're struggling for power, and that is causing the two major powers on this earth, nation to, uh, against nations, rising up against nation, are now getting ready to go to head one-on-one -on -one to each other. But we, as fellow human beings of this earth that were created in the image of God, are not... We should not be their servants. We should not be bowing down to their authority and their images and their, their demonic ways. But we are seeing prophecy that Jesus said would happen. He said, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We're already seeing the earthquakes. You're going to see more pestilence, more famine as a result of any war that breaks out. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's where we're at. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.